Hello everyone, and welcome to our celebration of health and safety. For those I haven't met before, I'm Rod Cook, Vice President of Workplace Health and Safety Services at the WSIB. We're joined today by our chair, Mrs. Elizabeth Whitmer, whom we'll hear from in just a few moments, and by our acting president and CEO, Mr. Tom Bell, who will present one of our Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards. We're also joined by Chief Prevention Officer, Dr. Joel Moody. We are also privileged to be joined today by Dr. Chris McLeod, Associate Professor at the University of British Columbia's School of Population and Public Health. Dr. McLeod and I will be discussing his research on the outcomes and impacts of a strong workplace health and safety program a little bit later on. Before we continue, I want to acknowledge that although this event is taking place virtually, we are each standing on land that has been inhabited by Indigenous peoples from the beginning. I encourage all of you to identify the Indigenous peoples of your area and acknowledge their history, rights, and connections to the land. Toronto, where I am right now, is the traditional territory of many nations including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. A big part of the reason we're here today is to announce the winners of our annual Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards. These awards are really important to us and we're so happy to be able to celebrate an amazing group of people whose commitment to the health and safety of their employees and customers is truly inspiring. The awards recognize businesses whose exceptional achievements in workplace health and safety deserve not only to be recognized and rewarded, but more importantly, serve as an inspiration to us all, no matter the size of our organization. Last month, we announced the five finalists for the 2021 Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards. Aardvark Drilling, First General Muskoka, Flightline Golf, Imperial Fence, and Terra Natural Foods. All five also happen to be members of our Health and Safety Excellence Program. And as part of our celebration today, we are also going to highlight the work that members, providers, and other stakeholders have achieved in the first two years of this program. But first, I would like to ask our chair, Mrs. Elizabeth Whitmer, to say a few words. Thank you, Rod. And hello, everyone. It's wonderful to join you today for this celebration of hard work and accomplishments in workplace health and safety. Making Ontario a safer place to work starts with all of you here today. It happens person by person, business by business, workplace by workplace. And I am so pleased to be able to recognize and celebrate all of your efforts and every step of your health and safety journey. They are valued. We know that businesses want to do what they can to keep their employees healthy and safe, but it can be difficult to know where to start. That is why we designed our programs and services on the principle that health and safety is a continuous journey and that improvements happen step by step. And it is why with our partners and stakeholders, we are continually expanding our reach and increasing our efforts to help small businesses. We are happy to report that right now, 40% of our Health and Safety Excellence Program members are small businesses. We want to do more though, because helping small business is a priority for us. And we will continue to develop health and safety approaches that are tailored to their needs. We are here to help you. We are also here to recognize exceptional achievement, and that is what the Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards are all about. These awards celebrate those businesses that go the extra mile to make sure their employees leave work at the end of the day as healthy and safe as the minute they arrived. As Rod said, this is the fifth year we're presenting these awards to recognize small businesses for their outstanding commitment, efforts, and achievements to make their workplaces healthy and safe. I look forward to these awards every year because they celebrate people whose commitment to health and safety is exemplary and inspiring. 
I am also very interested to hear about the accomplishments of the participants in our Health and Safety Excellence Program. One thing the award winners and the Health and Safety Excellence Program participants have in common is that they put health and safety of their employees and their customers at the forefront of their business. They embody the WSIB's vision of making Ontario the safest and healthiest place to work. If that sounds like a lofty goal to you, I agree. It is, and I can think of none more worthwhile than protecting the health and safety of everyone in the province. I am looking forward to joining our President and CEO Tom Bell in announcing this year's winners later in the program. Thank you, Mrs. Whitmer. Helping businesses prevent workplace injuries and illnesses is why our Health and Safety Excellence Program exists. It's a complete approach to workplace health and safety that helps businesses to improve workplace safety, whether they're just getting started or want to optimize processes they already have in place. We launched the program in November 2019, so it's now exactly two years old. And it has certainly been an interesting time for health and safety, as the pandemic has taken many lives and ended many businesses. It also put a bright spotlight on the need for strong health and safety programs and heightened people's awareness. For example, a recent Leger poll shows that 62% of Ontarians say they have become more interested in workplace health and safety measures during this difficult time. Together, we can channel that heightened awareness to keep health and safety top of mind, to have stronger measures in our workplaces and reduce the number of work-related injuries, illnesses, and fatalities in our province. All of you with us today are focused on building a prevention culture and know that workplace health and safety is not a cost, but an investment. And that is what the Health and Safety Excellence Program is all about. Today is a celebration of the providers we partner with to deliver the program and the more than 2,400 businesses covering almost 1 million Ontarians in this program. We hear from many of you that you appreciate the ability to customize the program based on your business's needs as you move along the health and safety continuum from awareness to excellence. We also know that many of you have already reinvested rebates received in this program. I want to highlight with respect to rebates that the program has paid out $10.4 million for successfully completing the HSEP topics. Those rebates are earned through validated results and that's money that can be reinvested in Ontario's economy. Here's another statistic. I think it's worth celebrating today that 90% of businesses involved in the Health and Safety Excellence Program say that participating in the program has led to changes in their safety culture. So we know that businesses are seeing a tangible return on their investment in the short term and we are confident we will see improvements in health and safety outcomes as well. And that is something to celebrate. So I wanna take this opportunity to recognize and celebrate the impact the Health and Safety Excellence Program providers, members, and stakeholders have had on strengthening the system. Thank you for your participation in the program and for your commitment to workplace health and safety. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity to talk with Dr. Christopher McLeod, an Associate Professor and Head of the Occupational and Environmental Health Division in the School of Population and Public Health at the University of British Columbia. He's also co-director of the Partnership for Work, Health and Safety. Dr. McLeod's research focuses on the evaluation of occupational health policies and practices, as well as the causes and consequences of work-related injury and disease. Dr. McLeod is currently leading an evaluation of the Health and Safety Excellence Program in Ontario that focuses on how changing health and safety practices impacts health and safety outcomes. We're now going to play a recording of a chat that I had with Dr. Chris McLeod about returns on investment in health and safety. Thank you, Dr. Chris McLeod, for joining me today for a conversation on health and safety, specifically why health and safety is good for business. I look forward to the conversation we're going to have and passing on some nuggets to the businesses listening in here. Yeah, great, Rod. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. 
Uh, I look forward to the, the conversation. Chris, to start off, what distinguishes workplaces that value and promote health and safety? Yeah, that's a great starting question, Rod. And, and what I would say is, is that uh, the key thing is a commitment to, to safety culture, making sure that that, that is uh, seen throughout the organization, right, from management through to the shop floor. Uh, that can be through formal vehicles like joint occupational health and safety committees. But of course, not all firms have those, particularly small firms. And so uh, we also want to see other aspects of, of thinking about how health and safety is encouraged and workers have uh, the tools and abilities to you know, feel that they could advocate for health and safety at work. Just as a quick follow-up on that, Chris, is, there, is one strength more important than the other? Is leadership commitment, for example, more important than worker empowerment? Yeah, I mean, in, in my view, you need both. So uh, certainly leadership commitment is important. And, and we, we see that strongly in the research literature. And, and certainly we also see that, that there are initiatives to commit leaders to that, whether that is, is through key performance indicators with the company or uh, with their own performance assessment. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I mean, we're talking about the health and safety of workers. And so without empowerment of those workers, I don't think you're really Really going to see transformational change. So you need both, uh, I think, if you're going to have to be a company where uh, you're a true leader, a true innovator, and, and have a real commitment to health and safety in the workplace. That makes a lot of sense. Chris, you've conducted extensive research across Canada. Are there lessons or insights that we could apply here in Ontario to improve our health and safety management system? Yeah, absolutely. So I've conducted uh, research on uh, the effectiveness of occupational health and safety management systems in uh, four Canadian provinces. Uh, and I think there are a number of key lessons and, and findings that I think that are applicable uh, to, to Ontario. So first of all, one of the things that we've found is that, and it's been a durable finding uh, and consistent across all, all studies, is that firms that are certified, so they have an effective occupational health and safety management system, are safer than firms that are not. And that is after we've accounted for a whole bunch of complex methodological issues. So we've got a high degree of confidence in, the, in, in that finding. Uh, but secondly, um, you know, one of the thing, other things that we've found is, is that there are key aspects of an occupational health and safety management system that are really important. And those are kind of what I call the pointy edge of it. So those are the action parts of an uh, occupational health and safety management system. And those are things like risk management, risk communication, training, things that really give uh, workers tools and the ability to make change uh, in, in the workplace. The other thing that I think is important is the rigor, the rigor of the assessment. So this is where we sort of distinguish between where health and safety management system certification is not effective compared to when it is. And it's really about the quality of the audit, the assessment, the information uh, that is used to determine whether a firm has those important components in place. Chris, we're going to switch gears a bit here now and talk about the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that workplaces need to be ready to respond to emerging workplace risk, which can be varied and include things like mental health issues. How can we adapt our health and safety programs to ensure they are responsive and proactive? Yeah, you know, I mean, this is a great question. And, and you know, I'll, I'll certainly say that it's a huge challenge and, and certainly something that that everyone watching, you know, has been grappling with over the last two two years. And you know, what I would start is by saying that that firms that already have health and safety management systems or have made investments in, in health and safety are already substantially ahead in terms of being proactive. Um, but it does mean that we have to think about health and safety differently. I mean, if you think about the issues of communicable or infectious disease, that wasn't something that most of us ever thought about uh, in most workplaces two years ago. And yet now it's a fundamental aspect of, of so much of, of what we do. And I don't think that's going to change uh, for the foreseeable future. But, but I want to touch a little bit on, on the issue of, of mental health because it, it's so important. And not only has that emerged as a consequence of the pandemic, it certainly has been emerging as, as something that we're really focusing on in workplaces prior to that as well. And in this 
aspect, I think we are going to need to do things differently. I think we're going to need to think about how we as researchers, as educators, as regulators, health and safety organizations uh, provide support. There, are, While there are sort of emerging uh, uh, standards around psychological health and safety, they tend to be complicated. They haven't necessarily been uh, uh, evaluated and they're not necessarily tweaked for small businesses that may not have an HR department. And so I think we're really going to need to think about how we support uh, each other in improving workplace mental health and developing strategies that are effective. This is particularly challenging, Chris, for small business owners. What would your message be to them? Yeah, it's a it's a great question, and and a, and certainly in in a few seconds, you know, what I would say is. Number one is is show you care, come to work with empathy for your workers, because in today's environment, particularly with the pandemic, it's hard. Chris, we're starting to see small businesses coming out of the pandemic, the light at the end of the tunnel. What is the one piece of advice that you would give small businesses considering what we have seen over the past couple of years? Helping small businesses improve health and safety is probably one of the most challenging things that that we can do as as researchers as regulators but it's so important and and so i think this is an area that ontario the wsib other organizations within your province can really be a leader in and and i think there's a couple of things that that you all can do and and one of the things is 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 thinking about what are the key needs of small businesses? Because their needs are different than medium and large businesses, and they don't have the capacity uh, that a large multinational corporation has. And so it's like, what are those essential needs and how can you support them? And I think the other thing there is, is, is the idea of flexibility. So how can small businesses respond uh, in, in, in different ways? And I think that's part of that support that you can provide, having that, that, that conversation. And then finally, what I would say is it's about celebrating success so that, that when you, uh, you know, have uh, organizations of small businesses that have made transformational change, I mean, it's a great opportunity to sort of learn and, and, and hold them up as, as exemplars. So uh, just a couple of ideas, but I hope uh, you find that helpful. Very helpful, Chris. Chris, I'm really thankful for the opportunity to be able to sit down today and talk to you about health and safety. Thank you for your insights and sharing your knowledge that you've gained from your research across the country and helping us be better here in Ontario. Yeah, thanks, Rod. And it's a, it's a real pleasure uh, to speak with you today. And and you know, I look forward you know to seeing the changes uh, that will improve health and safety in in Ontario. Uh, and uh, I um, would be pleased to continue the conversation sometime. I hope in person. Sounds great, Chris. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. And I want to again thank Dr. McLeod for his thoughts and for sharing the results of his research. Now it's time for us to turn our attention to the opening of the envelopes for the winners of the 2021 Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards. The people you are about to meet implemented some rigorous workplace health and safety programs that were then judged by an equally rigorous process. The judging panel looked at submissions from 75 businesses and somehow managed to narrow that list down to just three winners. The past year saw small businesses make some fundamental changes to their processes, their physical space, and in some cases, to their business model. All entrants deserve recognition for working hard to make their workplaces healthy and safe, and we applaud them all. There were so many inspiring, commendable entries this year that it was difficult to choose only three. I will ask Mrs. Whitmer, to announce our bronze level winner who will receive $2,000 that can be used to reinvest in their health and safety program. Thank you, Rod. I have the honor of announcing our bronze level winner. It is my privilege to announce that Aardvark Drilling is the winner of the 2021 bronze level award. Located in Guelph, Aardvark Drilling provides drilling services throughout Ontario for projects including mineral exploration, hydrogeological and environmental drilling. Accepting the award on behalf of the company 
is Gregory Zare. Thank you so much for this honor. We're truly grateful. Early on, the owners determined that they wanted to run their business in a way that minimized the human cost of injury. We saw a business case for doing so and decided to make safety a big part of what we're known for. A focus on safety has led us to working relationships with clients who value safe, reliable, professional work. Thanks to my counterpart on the JHSC, Mr. Andrew Bartley, and thanks to the ownership for deciding to make safety a part of our core values. Thank you, and congratulations, Gregory. Next up is our Silver Level winner, who will receive $3,000 that can be invested in health and safety. I'm asking Tom Bell, our acting president and CEO, to announce them. Thanks, Rod. It's my pleasure to announce that the Silver Level winner of the 2021 Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards is First General Muskoka. First General Muskoka is a construction company in Huntsville that provides emergency and catastrophic home restoration services around the clock. Congratulations. Here's Ron Dahl accepting the award on behalf of First General Muskoka. Hello. Uh, thank you everyone for acknowledging our successes uh, and in particular our success stories surrounding mental health. Thank you WSIB for providing a platform for all of us to share our success stories. Uh, I truly believe that uh, sharing is caring and there's no better way to learn and mentor uh, than to share life and work experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom, and congratulations, Ron. I would now like to ask the chair back to announce the gold level winner who will receive $5,000 that can be used to invest in health and safety. Mrs. Whitmer. Thank you, Rod. Now it's time for our gold level winner. Terra Natural Foods is the gold level winner of the 2021 Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards. Terra Natural Foods is a natural grocery store in downtown Kingston that sells directly to the community and also provides wholesale services to a number of companies in the area. I now invite you to enjoy this video highlighting their workplace health and safety accomplishments. Terra was established in 1972. We do a retail wholesale business. have all of the staff members that actively participate in the different procedures in order to make the health and safety policies essentially come alive. Progress is made in very little steps and you have to talk to people, uh, you have to listen to them and that's how you make progress. So when the pandemic rolled in, we did make many different changes. Probably the biggest thing was just the working out the interaction with customers because nobody knew what was happening when this started. The first change that we made was we began to restrict the number of customers into the store. For 35 years I wanted to have more people in the store, all of a sudden it was less. Fairly quickly on established a system of limiting the number of people in the store using shopping carts so that uh, we, when we ran out of shopping carts we knew we were we were full up. We were also doing a lot of pickup orders at the time, which was a very new procedure for us. It was really, really important to keep all employees coming to work and feel safe. Very early on, we decided to put plexiglass up. Another change that we made was that we asked all staff members to wear masks. Now we implemented that long before the public health asked people to start wearing the face masks. We made people on breaks to split them up so we, we made a second lunchroom. We started to close at 2 p.m. Uh, some people lost hours, obviously. All employees were continued to be paid at the same rate they were always paid. Nobody lost any money. It wasn't their fault that this all of a sudden hit them. We know that health and safety are valued here at Terra through a thousand small details. It's an attitude and a trust that good decisions will be made around the health and safety of us all who are working in the store. 
Please join me in congratulating the owners and employees of Terra Natural Foods on their achievement. Accepting the award on behalf of the company is Rudy Mogul and Charlotte Thompson. All right, that is wonderful news. We're really glad to hear that. Our employees and us work really hard on that and we're so happy. Thank you. Yes, I'm very, very proud of all the staff here at Terra Natural Foods and we're very happy to have won the Gold Award this year. Thank you very much. Wow, I was really struck by something in that video about Terra Natural Foods. Rudy said that progress is made in small steps, and it's so true. Most health and safety improvements don't require a huge effort. As we've all learned over the past couple of years, something small like washing your hands or wearing a mask can have a massive impact on our workplace health and safety. As always, before we wrap up our awards presentation, we have a request of the winners. As health and safety ambassadors, share your good news. Share it on your website, through social media, any way you can to help get health and safety message out to your peers in Ontario's small business community. And by all means, encourage your peers in other eligible businesses to compete next year. On behalf of the entire WSIB team, congratulations to all the recipients of the 2021 Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards. Thank you to all our nominees, to our chair, to our acting president and CEO, and to Dr. McLeod for joining us today. And thanks to all of you for all you're doing every day to improve health and safety in Ontario workplaces. Before we sign off, I will pass it back to our chair, Mrs. Elizabeth Whitmer, for some closing thoughts. Thank you, Rod. And thank you, everyone. This has been a tremendous event. And the winner's stories are truly inspiring. You have all put extraordinary effort and commitment into making your workplaces safer for the people who work in them and for the people with whom you do business. And I want to sincerely thank you for that. This is my 10th year as chair of the WSIB, and each year I look forward to the privilege of working with so many talented and committed people who devote tremendous effort to making our workplace health and safety system work for those it was set up to serve. All of you today are also part of this effort. Whether you're taking steps to improve your own workplace through the Health and Safety Excellence Program or by competing in the awards program and setting a standard for others to aspire to, you are part of a group of people who are helping right now to make Ontario the safest place to work. It's always been a pleasure to be a chair of an organization that supports and recognizes these efforts and your commitment. There is still much more work to do and there always will be. I encourage you to do what you can to raise health and safety awareness in your communities and among your peers. But for now, congratulations again to the winners of the 2021 Small Business Health and Safety Leadership Awards and congratulations to all of you for continuing to be health and safety leaders in your own community.